Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn all about the range function in Python. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to know here is what is the range function. Now the range function returns a sequence of numbers starting from zero by default and increments them by one by default and stops before a specified number. For example here, x is equal to range three comma six. So for n in x, when you print n, the results that will be returned are three, four, and five because they are in this range and they are being incremented by one. So now if we look at those three values here, start, stop, and step. Start, which is optional, is an integer which specifies at which position to start. Now the default is zero. Stop is required and it's an integer specifying at which position to stop. And step is again optional and it's an integer specifying the incrementation. So the default value is one. So if we have a look at this example, for x is equal to range, 3 comma 20 comma 2 and then for n in x when we go and print that out it will now print out all the values that are in between that range so this is the start this is the stop and this is how it's being incremented by so it's going up by twos so if we have a look at those numbers the start is the first value here so three the stop is where this range will stop and that's the second value there and then finally you have the step which is the increments so now if we have a look at this other example so in this example we will count down in reverse by using the negative one step so our example is here we've set our start to five our stop to zero and our step to negative one and then when we go and print our for loop you will see that it is now counting down backwards. So we have five, four, three, two, one. And then once it finishes the loop, it then moves to the final line of code, which is another print statement. So now we get to our problem. We need to create a program that accepts the start, stop and step values and then prints a loop for each number. So our example would be something like this. Start, whatever number you wanna put in there, stop, etc. And then what you need to do is you need to display the number and then you need to display a string which will also include the start and stop values. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a variable start. And so because we are going to use an integer, we need to make sure that it's an integer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow it to accept some input. So I'm just going to call it start and then press space. And then what we need to do is we need to copy that code and then paste it again. But now we are going to set it up as our stop. So now we've set up two variables, start and stop. And we're gonna do the same thing again for step. So now if we preview that, so now I can add in values, five, five, and whatever. But there's no other code to actually get it to work. So now we need to set up another variable. So this is for our range. So we're gonna say x is equal to range and then we're gonna say start. And then once we have that, we're gonna say stop. And then we are also going to have step. So now we need to add our for loop. So we're gonna say for n in x, then we need this colon. Now this is what we want it to do. So we want it to basically print. We're gonna use our f string. We're gonna say n, which is in our for loop. So that's gonna be our number, is between the start and the stop and we're gonna try and run this and we're gonna see what we have. So the start is going to be, let's say 10, the stop is going to be 20, and the step, which is the increments, is going to be two. And so there we have all those numbers listed in between 10 and 20. Now, if you wanna add some more code to this, what we could do is we could just say print, uh, finally finished. And so if we go back and run that, so let's say we have um, one and 10 and the step will be three. So we've got one, four and seven in between numbers one and 10. And then it prints our final string at the bottom, which says finally finished. But yeah, that's about it for this lesson. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.